Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm just going to be doing a, a short extension to the Maya to USD workflow that, that I previously posted onto the channel, uh, and this time specifically focusing on the .usdz format. And this came about after someone commented about was it possible to export that format from Maya, and initially I said it wasn't, but actually upon further investigation, I realized that it was very possible to do it, and this is what I'm going to explore now. Okay, so before we go into Maya, I just want to spend a little bit of time talking about the different formats uh, that USD uses. And essentially there's four. Um, the first one you'll be very familiar with, it's the one everybody uses and is the most general one, and that's .usd. Now this can be either an ASCII or a binary file, um, but you can't tell really what type of file it is just from the file extension. So what they done is they created two additional formats which allow you to tell what type of file it is just from the file extension. Um, for an ASCII file it's a .usda file and for a binary it's a .usdc file. Um, so straight away you can tell what type of file it is just by looking at the file extension. The fourth format is this .usdz file or usdz file. And this is a packaged file. Uh, and by that, I mean it can contain other data. Um, notably, it can contain the any one of the three previous USD formats, but also uh, PNG file, JPEG files, MP4A files, MP3s, and WAV files. Um, so that's really it. Those are the four main formats that make up um, USD. Now, if we just focus on USDZ for a moment, um, the key thing to remember about this file is it's a package. It's unencrypted, um, but it's got and it's got no compression. So essentially, it's a container. It's a it's a it's a package, and it's um, it's it's read only. And the reason why this is so important, uh, particularly for the AR kit, is that um, Apple use it as a three D model interchange, and it's ideal for this context because uh, the AR kit, for those who don't know, is the API which uh, Apple has that allows users to create content for uh, or augmented reality content for its iOS devices. And when you're doing that, or when you're working with 3D data, you're not going to want to have multiple 3D files and multiple texture files and materials. You're going to want as little uh, file, uh, files as possible because you're dealing with a smaller memory footprint and also smaller uh, hardware capacity. So the USDZ file is perfect for that. You can package everything up and contain it all within one file. So if you have a model, you've got all the materials and textures and any other, any other dependencies all within that one file, which is why Apple decided to use it. So if you're gonna be using the AR kit, then USDZ is gonna be pretty much crucial for you if you wanna get content from your 3D application um, onto your iOS device. Okay, so we're now in Maya. Let's see how we're able to work with .usdz files in Maya 2022. Let's start off by looking about how we import data into Maya. Go to the import dialog. Now, if we choose the, the file type of .usd, there's no other export here at all. It just says USD import. Um, there's no other option here. And underneath the options, there's nothing here to specifically set. Um, that you want a .usd um, Z file. Um, and if I just go to import now, I'm just going to choose this, this toy biplane. And this was uh, a sample uh, content that I downloaded from Apple's AR kit website. So you can freely download this if you want to as well. And I'm just gonna import this in. And straight away, that's worked. So we've brought in our data. Um, if I'm gonna hit six now, and I've got my textures as well, and this all looks perfectly fine. Um, and we can see that we've got a hierarchy there um, as well, and everything works in exactly the way that we want it to. Um, now, if I was to select these models here, um, you'll, you'll note that if you go to the attribute editor, it will refer to .png files. Now, I don't have these PNG files. I didn't download them from, from the website. Uh, they weren't available as part of the data set. And that's because they're contained inside the .usdz file, which is the whole point of the format. I don't have to worry about uh, having separate files and being able to plug them in to make sure that the, the file path dependencies are all working. If it's inside the .usdz file, it should all 
basically work. Now, I can choose, of course, to bring data in via this method uh, as a scene and create a stage. And let's just try that now, do the same thing again. And that also uh, works. I'm just going to move it off to one side. Although it seems to have not brought in all the textures, I'm not sure why that actually is. But we can see in our outliner, we've now got a more native type of um, USD hierarchy. So that all kind of works um, as well. So I'm just going to delete that. So this to say, for example, we've made a change to this file uh, and um, we could make we could make it anything. This to say, I'll just move this out there like that. And we want to now export this as a .usd uh, Z file. Select my model. And again, if we go to our options, it's the same thing again. There's, you can The file type is .usd. The only option I've really got to, to specify the type of USD file is the file format output here to make it ASCII or binary. Um, you know, there's nothing else there at all in the geometry. It's just talking about materials and skeletons and so on. And so that's really about it. Uh, so you'd be forgiven for thinking that you can't do in it a USDZ uh, export, but you can. So if you just go to export selection, now all you need to do is type in the name of the file. So I'm just going to call it plain one, but I'm just going to type in the actual file extension itself and just go export. And we can see in the result, it's actually exported the .usd um, z file. And now I should be able to just delete that from the scene and do a round trip workflow and import it. There it is, straight back into Maya. There we go. And you can see it's the same file that I just exported. So that's that's the trick. Um, and I would suspect as well, this works exactly the same way if you want to do a USD B, uh, sorry, not USD B, USD A and a USD C format. If you were to just um, choose the ASCII file and put in, you know, plain, uh, to dot USD A, um, it would also export it as USD A file, which is ASCII. Um, so that's really about it. And I, I guess maybe it doesn't need to have the file extension there if you type it in yourself. But that's how you basically can import and export dot USD Z files from uh, Maya 2022. Now, one thing I've noticed as well is that already within one month of the latest Maya release, Autodesk have actually updated the Maya USD plugin as well, which is absolutely fantastic. So the, the version that ships with 2022 is 0 0.8.0. There's now a 0 0.9.0. Um, so you can, get, you can go to GitHub. You've got all the packages here as well and the source code. So if you can't go part of the source code yourself, you can download the the um, the plugins and just install them. So it's nice and easy. And I did notice that among the features that have been fixed or the bug fixes, there is an opt. There is a, a note here that says USDZ import now supports textures. Now we were able to import that and the textures worked fine, but when we brought it in via the stage method, that didn't work so well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade my plugin now to the latest version. And let's try and run those imports uh, again. Okay, I've updated to the latest version of the Maya USD plugin. Let's see if there's any differences here. We go to import again, bring up our dialog box, and um, straight away, just tuck down here, we now have an option to uh, check on or off whether or not we want the, um, uh, the textures to be imported. And you can see here that when I hover over, it gives you a little uh, description. So when a USD Z file is chosen, you know, the texture files are imported and copied to new files on disk. Um, and again, you can turn it on and off if you want. And again, you can, it says it navigate your to the current Maya workspace source images directory. So what this does is that it imports those um, texture files in the .usd Z file and then copies them to disk so you can retrieve them as well, which is really handy. Um, but it's good to have that option now. So I'm just going to just tick that on. I'm just going to hit import. Um, I'm going to find my biplane again. And away we go. And we're off and running again. And that's all kind of working perfectly fine. If I was to do it the other method, let's see if that that's actually been fixed. Um, and I probably think it most likely has. Um, and it does look like it has done it. And there we go. So we've both got, um, we've got both types of data now. Um, in the scene and working i think though personally if i was working with dot uh, usdc files i wouldn't really use uh, this method here because 
Um, this method is all about creating stages and uh, scene assemblies. So you're going to be creating structures and hierarchies and then referencing in um, additional data. Uh, so I think that's really important to bear that in mind. I think really when you're going to be working with uh, AR kit data uh, and looking to push it to an iOS device uh, for AR stuff, you're really only going to be working with single models and think you're not going to be doing huge elaborate scenes. So I think this method works perfectly well. If you've got data inside my or you bring it in from another source, get it into my, get it structured correctly, and then you should just just be able to export it to, to USDZ in the way I just showed you. So. Yeah, so that's it. I hope that was really useful. I hope that was really useful for anyone who's looking to uh, import and export USDZ data in and out of Maya 2022.